Hello, my name is Sam and welcome to another video talking about Tap Forms 5 for iOS and Mac. Today we've got another one from the forums, a uh, post here from GLS uh, asking about a consultation billing database. Now, before we get into this, uh, I'm going to actually duck over to another part of the forum and I'm actually going to have a look at uh, this invoice tracking template of Brendan's. Now, Brendan's got a bunch of templates on the forums if you look through as well as bundled in as sample documents in your tap forms 5 on both iOS and Mac then what we're gonna look at is one that's great for the Mac because it has uh, a custom layout in it and we're gonna use that as the basis for this so uh, we're gonna put the link in the description below to download the invoice tracking template off of the forum from the template exchange and we can see Brendan's post here uh, with customers orders and products and we're gonna flip over and see how we can use that to answer this consultation billing database question now GLS is coming to us from uh, MS access a bit of SQL a bit of bento and FileMaker on the Mac uh, and it's trying to solve a similar sort of problem so instead of uh, in this template where we have customers orders and products we've got clients which similar to customers uh, consultations uh, which I think will fit into products and then orders are similar to, to invoices here uh, so you have the client with all of their information you only want to store that once that makes sense you have a consultation which is when you go and consult with that, that client uh, so one-to-many relationship there between clients and consultations and then obviously you want to bill your client for an invoice so a one-to-many for invoice and then uh, one-to-many from invoice to consultations uh, so this all makes sense and the ask here is to basically figure out if we can automatically display records of unbilled consultations uh, uh, have a check for the bill consultation uh, and be able to basically generate the invoices uh, that are not yet billed right pretty pretty useful use case pretty common use case uh, so I have this really long post and we're going to go through this. Uh, this initial script has an error in it. Uh, and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, we can see some changes, uh, improvements to that. Um, we'll actually make these real time in this uh, video so that you can see what those changes were. Uh, but let's have a look at this. So the first start part is we're going to have to recreate a little bit of this. So we've already got customers and what we're going to do is we'll just rename this one to clients so that we fit in with uh, the lingo that we're using. Uh, we're going to hide orders and products for the moment and uh, just as a side layouts on, on the Mac. Uh, a great example here from Brendan showing you what it can look like. Let's make that a little bigger with this sort of A4 and letter view uh, that really looks like uh, an invoice sort of layout. Uh, so one might want to copy that. For the moment, we're just going to hide the form, uh, hide the form, and do that so that we don't really, really care about. And let's just put this in a new category for call it demo there we go and then boop so we're going to have clients we're going to create a new one for consultations let's go do that uh, create our new form here for consultations and we're going to create a date field for uh, when it happened and we're going to prefix this with consultation date just to make it clear uh, We're going to do a number field for uh, uh, Hours build billing units Time build let's do time build uh, We'll do another one for rate uh, and that will be our rate card and we'll make this into a currency style with two decimal places we're going to add very quickly a calculation field uh, and that's going to be total cost and we're going to hit edit formula on this one and do time build 
multiplied by rate. It's important that we double click this on the Mac because uh, these special placeholders actually have the meaning. If we just type in rate, uh, Tapforms doesn't know that we've actually linked it to the field. Uh, we want this to be a number and that's all good. We're also going to change this to be in the currency style as well and two decimal places. Now let's just give that a test. Time build, we'll say 10, 10 rate uh, 12, 50. And that automatically calculates out our total cost. Now we need to link this back to clients. So let's go to clients and we will create a new link from uh, the clients across to consultations and that's a one-to-many relationship. We're going to tick show inverse relationships here so that we can get that little clients thing at the top. Uh, let's add a, a subject and notes and actually let's make that a proper note field. Yes and we'll put consultation down. down. Uh, just so we've got a thing make that there let's set this to default to the current date so that when we're adding things defaults to our current date and Brendan is our client lucky Brendan okay so our next form is we need to create our invoice uh, and we missed one in our consultations which is uh, if it's billed or not and what would we call that field consultation invoiced so let's give that that same name as well we're going to make that a check mark uh, consultation invoiced and we're going to default that obviously to not ticked so that'll automatically show up uh, and then we need to create our form uh, invoices in our demo category and go with the date field for invoice date uh, uh, payment date we need to link the client again oops that's not what I wanted I want to add a new field at the bottom for link to form for linking to our uh, new invoices form again show inverse relationship one to many uh, tap forms has automatically reset the field title for that to be invoices for me and we can see that at the bottom here and um, we can now link that back and we'll say invoice date is today uh, we haven't been paid for this yet so we'll, we'll just leave that blank and now we need to create a link to form for the consultations that we want to use. Uh, and we can do show inverse as well, uh, so that when we're looking at the consultation, the invoice it's tied to will be listed here. Maybe we don't want that because we don't necessarily want to see that, but you can then jump from a consultation to an invoice and vice versa. I think this is actually one of the really powerful things of tap forms where uh, you can just uh, and we're in that one. So you can just uh, click from from Brendan. Here is is this client record. I can click through to the invoice, to the consultations, and you know just keep going. Okay, so let's jump back to our consultations record. Um, we'll put that below there. Now, technically, we could use this to automate this. Uh, consultation invoice. Uh, we're going to use a, a field for the moment just because it makes things a little easy. And for this, let's select none to get rid of that. Why did that not do that? Oh my God, there we are. Uh, the zoo. Okay, so we need to now create a safe search. Uh, and I call this one uninvoiced consultations. Uh, so Let's create a new safe search here on the right, uninvoiced consultations, and that's where consultation invoice is no. And we'll hit save on that. And that'll basically give us all of the consultations that we haven't uh, built for. So if we tick that and uh, force it to refresh itself, 
it then disappears. And if we untick it, it shows up. Now, the reason to be using a search is it sort of helps tap forms, uh, helps the scripting system you know, cut down a bit on the amount of records we need to look at, uh, because basically we can ask tap forms to maintain the search for us, uh, and it will then uh, automatically filter all of the records and only give us the ones we care about. And this is sort of a, a balance between being able to sort of efficiently retrieve everything, and obviously uh, we could write a script that reads every single consultation, but that's not really a, a good use of uh, processing time when Tapforms has the ability to uh, pre-format this for us. Okay, so now what we need to do is uh, start getting the bits and pieces together. And uh, we're going to start with this. Is there, there was a second one. Did I reply? Where is it? Oh, we'll just use this. So when we have uh, a script we'll just add this here and we'll use this as the baseline and and we're going to call it import consultations so let's do that tap forms is going to generate some boilerplate for us we're not going to use it um, or technically you know we sort of did use it but uh, not in this use case and we can see uh, a few things so this one's actually get search named and we can see now that in the editor it's really highlighted that and we need to get all of the records and the other thing that was wrong with this that we came across was uh, set field value I think is the other way around Uh, set field value. Uh, no, that's right. Why? Oh, add record to field takes the record first and then the thing. Okay. That was our other error. Okay. So this has a bunch of boilerplate in it um, for placeholders. So we already have our consultations form that we created. We already have the uninvoiced consultation search. So now we need to get uh, the invoice client, which is the invoice client field ID. Um, which, where were we? Yeah. Um, so the invoice field invoice client field ID is the field ID of the link to form field in the invoice form. So let's hit save on that. And in the invoice form, look at our fields. Uh, and it's this client's inverse relationship. All right, so we're going to use that to grab the client that this invoice is linked to. So we do need to set that first. Uh, and we're going to splice that in here. Uh, bop, 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 bop. And we're going to hit save on that. And then the next one is we need to scroll through. The third line starts with our loop. So we're going to loop through all of the consultations that haven't been invoiced. And what we're looking for is if that invoice, um, that consultation matches the client of this invoice. Uh, so we've got that, and so we need to find the value of the client consultation field ID, which is this one here. Uh, and this is going to be the linked from form field matching the consultation in the same pattern as we did the invoice, right? So save on that. So what we're looking for is in this consultations, this client link from form field again, we're going to copy that ID out of the interface here jump back to our invoice and hit, and we're going to replace that in there. And so that's there. We need to now add, so now that we've found uh, an in, uh, a consultation that matches the same client as the one that this invoice has been created with, uh, we need to add this record to uh, our field invoice to consultant. So, this field invoice to component should be the field ID of the link to form field 
in the invoice to the consultations form. All right, so we'll hit save, we'll hit field. Now this is the link from invoices to consultations that we created. Uh, we're gonna copy that link to field there. Uh, I'm gonna put that in here. There we go. And last but not least, uh, we need to set the uh, that invoiced flag to true. Now you've noticed that I've used the uh, IDs a lot. Uh, many of these fields, but not all of them, particularly the link from form fields, are available here on the left. And this is yet another one of those fields. So what we're going to do is get the ID of that consultation invoiced field and we'll splice that in here and we'll hit save and let's hit run on that actually let's get up the console just in case we have any errors and we'll hit run on that see what we get and there's one entry and we can see that it is now linked to this invoice so let's create a new one call at that time build to 50 our client is Brendan again we're going to create a new invoice uh, let's set an arbitrary day in the past we're going to select our client again and then we're going to import uh, consultations um, and so we can see here that we've now automatically imported that and if we created a few of these Uh, we'll do baked Alaska. I hear it's uh, toasty this time of year. Uh, Brendan and uh, and we're just putting random numbers here and realistically random things. Um, so now we've got all of that. If we go back, uh, we can actually import to either of these, funnily enough. Uh, but let's just rerun this one as our latest. Uh, and we can see that now those two new entries that I created are there. Uh, so this is how you can use scripting in Tapforms 5 to uh, help you create links, uh, do that little bit more uh, logic of... Uh, looking for items, using a safe search to cut down on the amount of records you need to process, and then then using the link from form fields to help join the data together and automatically create new links uh, and set values in those forms so that you can get an invoice flow that works very similar to this. Uh, and GLS responded here uh, with a, a, a note saying, thank you, uh, now it works uh, uh, great. Uh, I could have sworn I had an extra reply in here. Let's. Uh, there it is. Looks like it hit it. Uh, so you, as you can see, we renamed get search name to get search named. Uh, we added get records, and then we switched uh, the order of add record to field. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, comment below if there was any questions you've got, and if this was helpful to somebody else, please share it with them.